Alright guys, now uh, in this uh, video, uh, which is the second video in the series, um, uh, we'll be working on the uh, data manipulation portion of the paper, right? Uh, task number three, database. Um, and the application to use uh, is actually Microsoft Access, okay? So uh, before we can answer um, any of the questions here, we need to create an empty database uh, in order for us to store uh, whatever um, data in tables uh, that are required by um, the uh, questions here, okay? So the application for us to use is uh, Microsoft Access, right? A-C-C-E-S-S, -S, this is the one. And then I'm going to select blank database, and I'm going to select where I want to create the database, okay? Now for me, I have my files on the table, uh, table plot on the desktop. So I'm going to save it here. I'm just going to call it DB and then I'm going to click create. So what happens is I now have an empty database ready for me to um, uh, import data or insert anything I want, okay? So in order for me to double check, if I go to my working folder, I can see that a new database has been created, all right? So now um, let's look at question 18, okay? It says using a suitable database package, uh, import the file n220score.csv. Now, um, any file that ends with a .csv is actually a comma-separated value file, and it is um, a text file. Okay, so let's open the folder to have a look at it. So n220score.csv. Now, if I open this um, in um, its native format in Notepad, okay, you will notice that the information is actually not separated by um, commas, uh, but separated by spaces, okay, as you can see here. So um, this 2020 October November paper is uh, somewhat unique because in most of the other papers, uh, the data is actually separated by commas like, like so. Okay, for example, like so. Okay, so um, it, it might be something that uh, you need to be aware about when um, looking at the data here. Okay, now the reason why it looks like an Excel file is not because uh, um, a CSV file is an Excel file, but because Excel is the default program to open it. Okay, so we need to remember that because, uh, uh, well, it comes into play when you are importing the file uh, in a bit. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, database here. And I'm going to import the n220score.csv file into the database as a new table. So because I'm importing something, I'm getting something from the outside, right? I need to go to external data. And then under import, uh, import and link here, okay, I'm going to go to new data source. I'm going to go to from file, and then I'm going to select text file, okay? Because remember, a CSV file is actually a text file, not an Excel file. It is the it has an Excel icon uh, because Excel again is the default program to open it, right? So I'm gonna select text file, I'm gonna go browse, go to my desktop, and then I'm gonna select n220score.csv and I'm gonna click open, right? Now the first option here it says import uh, the source data into a new table in the current database, right? So that's what I want to do. I want the data to be imported as a new table. So I'm going to click OK, and then um, characters such as comma or tab separate each field, right? Remember, uh, previously um, when I showed you guys the uh, data inside uh, uh, Notepad, you will notice that each field uh, is actually separated by a tab. So I'm going to select delimited, okay? So I'm going to click Next, and then as you can see here, the first row actually contains the field names. So the field names is basically the name of each particular field, right? So the last name uh, and then followed by the names, uh, first name followed by the names, club code followed by the club code, right? So the first row is actually not part of the data, but it's actually the name of the data. So I need to select this first row contain uh, field names, okay? So as you can see, the data is actually separated correctly for us already using tab okay so if it is comma um, access should be able to detect it and it will um, highlight as comma okay now let's go next and then uh, we're going to set the data type okay now what does this mean if you look here each field name 
has its own data type, right? So last name, first name, and club code, the data type is text. Age is an integer, right? Kilometers per hour is a number, but it has two decimal places. Position, integer. Score, integer. Race number, integer. Uh, category code, I think. Text, distance in kilometers is an integer, right? So I'd like to draw your attention to kilometers per hour here. It is in two decimal places, okay? So if I go to advance, okay, I can compare the data type here with the data type specified here to make sure they match, okay? But if you look at kilometers per hour, okay, it says that it has two decimal places, but as you guys can notice here, right, the decimal places uh, is actually separated by a comma instead of a dot. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, like if you look at a number, right? Okay, like 5.92. Instead of being 5.92, it's 5,92. Okay? So this question is kind of unique in this sense. So how we tackle that is in advance here, when it comes to kilometers per hour, right? Do you see something called decimal symbol here? See that? Decimal symbol. So instead of putting it as a dot, okay, we need to change that, okay, to a comma. And then we need to change it to double. Double meaning any number that has decimal places, okay? So this applies to kilometer per hour. So I'm going to change it to double, and then I change the decimal symbol to comma instead of a dot. If you put a dot, what's going to happen is when you import the data later, uh, all the decimal places will be cut off, and you only get um, the numbers uh, uh, before the decimal place. So instead of 5.92, you're going to get 5, 4, 4, 5, 6. Instead of 5.92, 4.55, 4.92, 5.91. Okay? So the others, um, integer, 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 those are fine. Um, category code is short text, that's fine. Um, distance uh, in kilometers is long integer. So the only thing we needed to change was this. We change it to double. Double is uh, any number that has decimal places. Okay, so I'm done with that. I'm going to click next and then let's look at the next question. Okay, set race underscore number as a primary key. So I need to define my own primary key because if I allow access to add a primary key for me, it's going to add an ID uh, field here. Okay, a field with a, a with a field name ID, and that's not what I want. I want the race number to be the primary key. So I'm going to choose my own primary key, and I'm going to select race number. I'm going to go next, and then I'm going to click finish. Okay, so we don't need to save the import steps. Okay, that's not really important anyway. So I'm going to close it. So notice that you have a new table here. So let's double click on the table to see the data that is imported. Okay. So text, everything looks fine here. Age is fine. Kilometers per hour, right? It's all good here. 8.77 instead of 8, okay? Because again, remember, um, we put in comma as the decimal symbol, okay? And then position, um, integer, 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 da, da, da. race number, all good. Uh, category code, it is in text, and then distance in uh, kilometers. So all good. So question 18, done. Okay, so let's look at question 19 now. Import the file n220club.csv as a new table in your database with all fields set with appropriate data types. Set the club code field as a primary key. Okay, so I'm going to go to external data again because I'm um, importing something from outside. Okay, I'm going to select new data source from file and I'm going to select text file. Same thing. Okay, so what I'm importing now is n220club.csv. So I'm going to select that file, n220club. Again, I want to import it uh, into a new table in the current database, so I don't need to change anything. I'm going to click OK. Um, it's delimited, right? Characters such as comma or tab separate each field, so all good. Next. And then same thing here. The first row actually contains the field names. They are not part of the data, so I'm going to check the checkbox here, first row contain field names, and then I'm going to go next and check the um, data types here. Okay, so if you look at the questions here, okay, um, it actually says 
um, with all fields set with appropriate data types. Okay, now, um, so we don't really need to change anything here because there, there are no data types that are defined like in question 18. Okay, so we're going to assume that we don't need to change uh, any of uh, the data types for the field names here. So I'm going to go next, and then it's going to ask me to choose a primary, uh, primary key again. So what is the primary key this time? So set the club underscore code field as a primary key. So again, choose my own primary key, club underscore code. I'm going to go next, and I'm going to click finish. Okay, so I now have another table here called n220club.csv so n220club I'm going to open that you have all the data here leng leng sui sui chante chante okay so let's look at question 20 now okay so import the file n220group.csv as a new table in your database with all fields set with appropriate data type so this is essentially the same thing as question 19 okay so set the group code field as a primary key so again um, external data, new data source from file, text file. Okay, so I'm going to browse that and 220 group. Okay, again, I'm going to import the source data into a new table in the current database. So I'm going to click OK, I'm going to click Next. The first row is also the field names. Okay, it is not part of the data. Uh, click Next. Don't think I need to change any of the data types here. Go next, then we have to look at the primary key. So set the group code field as a primary key. So again, choose my own primary key, group code as the primary key field. Click next and finish. So we now have three tables that we just imported. Now for table one, it's just a temporary table. If you don't need it, just close it and it will just disappear. So now we have three tables, all imported. Um, with the uh, correct data types uh, for each field name. Okay, now evidence five. Place in your evidence document screenshots showing the primary keys, field names, and data types used in all three tables. Okay, now right now I um all my tables are actually open in a view. Okay, called the data sheet view. So data sheet view actually allows you to see the field names and all the um data. Okay, so each, it will show you the records, the field names, and uh, the fields here. Okay, but it does not show you the data type. And that is what the question wants, right? It's, it says showing the primary keys, field names, and data types used in all three tables. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to right click on the tables here, one by one, and go to design view. And this will actually display not only the field names, not only the data types, but also the primary key. I'm not sure whether you guys can see this, but there's a small little key here for race number. Okay. So we need to take a screenshot of this, print screen that, and put it into our evidence document. This is evidence number five. Okay. So first table, I'm going to crop that to show only... Um, what is required. Okay, so that's the first table. Then uh, the next table. I'm going to go to design view. Okay, you can also use your snipping tool or your Windows uh, screen capture. I think, I uh, can't really remember the key combination. Windows Shift S or something like that. Okay, I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it here. So that's for the second table. Okay, maybe this is a little bit too big. Ah, there you go. Okay, and then move on to the third table. So design view. I'm going to use the snipping tool. Snip, snip, snip. Okay, I'm going to select this. Copy that. And then I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so we're done uh, with the uh, first page already. Next, we're going to uh, move on to question 21. Uh, to create relationships uh, between the tables. All right. All right. So um, question 21 now. Okay. It says uh, create one to many relationships as links between the club code field in the club table and the club code field in the score table, group code field in the group table and the cat code field in the score table. Okay. So um, 
So because we have uh, multiple tables, um, and this is actually a relational database, we need to be able to uh, uh, create relationships between tables so that we can extract data from one table by referring to data from another table. Okay, so in order for us to do that, uh, we need to be able to create relationships so that um, the tables can, in a way, talk to each other. Okay, so in order for us to create the relationship that the question requires, okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to close the tables first. Okay, because keeping the tables uh, open is equivalent to it being uh, used. Okay, and if, if you want to create relationships, okay, you need to um, close the table so that um, uh, you'll be able to edit whatever is happening inside. Okay, I hope it makes sense. Okay, anyway, so let's close that, right, close that. I'm going to save everything that requires saving. And then I'm going to go to database tools and relationships. Okay, so once I click on that, you will see that the add tables... Um, uh, selection appears here and I need to have all three tables there all right so I'm gonna just select all three tables by holding down control or shift okay and I'm gonna click add selected tables okay so you will see that all the tables are actually uh, included in the, um, uh, uh, the, the the panel here okay so I'm gonna resize this table so that I can see all the data and then let's have a look at the question so club code field in the club table. So club code field in the club table here and the club code field in the score table. So this club code to the club code here. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to click it and drag it and drop it on club code. Okay. And then in order to ensure that the data, uh, the reference is done correctly, I'm going to enforce referential integrity okay and then I'm gonna click create so you notice that there's actually a one-to-many relationship between the club code here and the club code here okay now let's look at the next question it says group code field in the group table so group code field in the group table here and the cat code field in the score table category field good so I'm gonna take this click it, drag it, and drop it here. And again, I'm going to enforce referential integrity and click create. So notice that there's actually a one-to-many relationship between here to here and here to here. Okay, so once I'm done, I'm gonna save that. And then I'm going to place in my evidence document screenshots showing the type of relationships, uh, relationships are between the three tables. Okay, so I just need to take a screenshot of this. Okay, let's use the snipping tool. I'm going to put this in evidence number six. Okay, so next question. Enter the following details as a new record in the score table. Okay, so I'm just going to open the score table again. Close this. Do you want to save the changes? Hell yeah. Okay, score table. Now I need to enter a, the information here into the score table here, but I can't enter it on the first record, okay? Because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna overwrite the record here. So in order for me to be able to jump to the last record, uh, record, okay? I need to select new blank record here. So I'm gonna click this and you'll notice that I'm immediately brought to the end of uh, the table, okay? So flatter Susan. EPE 12, 24, 4.05, 2, 1, 2, 5, 1, 4, 7, 6, FE, 5, 0. And then once I'm done, I'm going to press enter. Okay, so pressing enter means I'm actually committing or saving the data. All right, and I'm going to click save. Okay, so done with that question check your data entry for errors. I'm pretty sure I didn't make any mistakes. And then I'm gonna save the data. I've just done that, okay? So next, we're gonna move on to question 23. All right, so using fields from all tables, all tables, okay? So remember we have three tables, huh? Okay, so now it says, 
using fields from all tables produce a tabular report that contains a new field called total underscore time which is calculated at runtime. So this field will multiply the kilometers per hour by distance um, underscore km um, and divide this by 100, uh, 1440, right? Format this field to display time as hour hour, minute minute and second second. Okay, now in order for us to produce a tabular report Okay, we need to first produce a query. Okay, so a query allows us to combine data from all the tables so that we can number one, um, put in new calculated fields and number two, we can actually put in selection criteria okay, to extract the data we need and uh, throw away the data that we do not need. Okay, so um, one of the examples that I give you guys in class is basically uh, playing the Akinator, right? Remember that? Okay, so the Akinator asks you different questions and based on your answers, these answers are actually converted into selection criteria, right? So, um, so the selection criteria allows you to retain certain uh, uh, data and uh, eliminate data that is not related to your selection criteria. Okay, so let's do the first thing first. Okay, let's combine data from all three tables uh, into a query. Okay, so what's going to happen is, oops. Okay, so what's going to happen, right, is I'm going to select any of the tables. It doesn't matter which table I select first. Okay, the most important thing is I select data from all three tables. So I'm going to select the first table here. I'm going to go to create and I select query wizard. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to shift all the data over from the first table, select the second table, shift the data over, and then select the third table and shift the data over. So I basically combine data from all three tables already. Okay, I'm gonna go next. Don't need to care about this. Would you like a detail or summary query? Of course I want a detail. Okay, shows every field of every record. That's what I want. Next, and then I'm gonna name this query question 23 because that is the question I'm currently working on. Okay, and I'm going to click finish. So you'll notice that everything that is displayed here is basically data from all three tables combined. Okay, right. So now I have all the data from all three tables. Okay, we're going to tackle the first question here. Okay, so we're going to take, uh, create a new field called total underscore time. And the field will actually take kilometers per hour, multiply by distance in kilometers, I think, and divide it by 100, uh, 100, 1440. So basically, it's going to take uh, kilometers per hour here, multiply by distance in kilometers here, and then divide it by 1440. Okay, so how do we do that? I can't just add a new field here called total time, right? I can't, okay? So what I need to do is I need to go to a special place called design view. So this allows me to actually add in uh, an extra field or a calculated field called total underscore time. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Don't need that for now. I'm going to close this as well so that you guys know where to... Uh, locate it later anyway so i'm going to go all the way to the back here and i'm going to resize this so that you get you guys can see what i'm typing okay so total underscore time colon colon is basically equals in uh microsoft access anyway so it says that uh, this field will multiply the kilometers per hour so it's km underscore hour here so what I need to do is I'll just copy it exactly. KM underscore hour multiply by distance underscore KM, which is here. So I just need to copy it. Distance underscore KM divided by 1440. Okay. And I'm going to press enter. Right. So I'm going to run the query here. Or I can actually use data sheet view. Okay, those are the same thing. So I'm gonna run it, and then you will notice that I have a total time here that is calculated by taking kilometers per hour 
multiply by distance in kilometers divided by 1440. However, the question requires you to display it in hours, minutes, and seconds, right? Right now, it's displayed <laughs> as a decimal uh, uh, number, okay? That has like freaking multiple digits be behind it. Okay, anyway, so decimal places, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go to design view. I'm going to select the new field, and then I'm going to select property sheet because I want to change the way uh, the data is displayed therefore I need to select property sheet okay and then under format here I'm just going to type hh colon mm colon ss and I'm going to press enter okay so once I'm done and I run it again you will notice that the total time is now displayed in hours minutes and seconds okay so that's what the question actually wants all right so now we've done the calculated field okay now we need to put in the correct selection criteria to um, retain the data we want and throw away the data we do not need okay so let's have a look here right now you see that we have 773 records right so one row is called a record so we have 773 records here okay now but the question doesn't want all the records, right? The question only wants select the records where the club names include uh, club name includes the text MTB, the age is twenty or more, the distance in kilometers is fifty or seventy. So only the records that match these three criteria can be displayed. Okay. So what I have to do is I'll go to design view and let's work on the first one first, okay? Club name includes the text MTB. So now when it says includes the text, you need to use a wildcard, okay? So a wildcard, for lack of a better word, okay, means whatever, okay? So for example, if I say that uh, the club name includes, uh, sorry, uh, the club name begins with MTB. So I have to put MTB followed by a wild card okay and that wild card is symbolized by an asterisk okay so this means mtb mtb followed by whatever the asterisk actually means whatever okay and then if i say ends with the word mtb i will have to put asterisk mtb okay however if i want to say contains the word MTB, I will put whatever, MTB, whatever. So this means I don't really care where MTB is as long as it is within the data, I require, uh, I will select the data, okay? So this is begins with MTB, right? This is ends with MTB, and this one basically means contains MTB. Okay, so what I need to type here is very simple, star MTB star or asterisk MTB asterisk. I'm going to press enter. Now notice that Microsoft Access actually adds a like here for you. And that's actually the correct uh, syntax for a query. Okay, but you don't need to type in the like. All you need to do um, is just type um, asterisk MTB asterisk. Okay, so let's, let's run the query to see whether our new criteria actually works. So let's run it. Club name, MTB, MTB, MTB. Free Spirit, MTB Cycling. Kelso, MTB. MTB Dirt Rollers. And so on and so forth. Now remember guys, previously we had 773 records, right? Now after putting in the first, uh, first criteria, we now have 102 records only. Okay, so we are actually narrowing down the data or the records that uh, we want. Okay, so let's look at the second question right now. So I'm going to close this. Don't need you. Okay, next one. H is 20 or more. Okay, so let's find H. Where the hell is H? H, 20 or more. So you need to use the mathematical operator. So greater than or equals to 20. Greater than or equals to uh, 20, which means 20 or more. So it includes 20. So let's run it again. Now, we have 64, okay? We have less data now. So it's actually um, um, throwing away the records that we don't need and retaining the ones that we need, okay? 
So let's look at the final one. Distance in kilometers is 50 or 75. Okay, so again, let's go back to design view. Distance in kilometers is 50 or 75. So we literally type in an or. Okay, so let's run that. And now we have only 40 records. Okay, we started with uh, 773. In the end, after putting in all the correct criteria, we now have only 40 records. Okay, so now we are done with our query because we just put in a calculated field and we have done the filtering already. So now our query is ready to be displayed in a meaningful manner in a tabular report. Okay, so basically a query is there for you to uh, perform calculations, uh, to filter out uh, the records you don't need. And once you have all the data you need or all the records you need, you then take the records and the data and display it in a tabular report or a report uh, in a meaningful way. Okay, because obviously um, not everybody will be able to make sense of a data sheet view like that. You need to arrange the data properly uh, in a, a report so that it is more legible and easily understood by other people. Okay, so all these three tables combined to create this query. So from this query now, I need to create a report. So it's basically a top-down approach. So tables to query and this query to a new report. So I'm going to go to create and I'm going to select report wizard. Okay, so let's see what needs to be displayed. All right, so last name, first name, gender, age, race, number, kilometers per hour, I think, distance in kilometers, club name, position, and total time. Okay, so let's select that. So last name, first name, gender, age, race number uh, that's a lot of data uh, 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 kilometers per hour distance in kilometers club name club name um position and then finally total time okay i'm gonna go next and then we need to make sure that everything fits within one box because we are not doing any grouping. So if you see something like this, please toggle it to make sure that everything fits within one box. We are not grouping it uh, by gender. We are not grouping it by club name either. We just want all the data to be displayed. Okay, so I'm going to go next here. Um, then the question says, do you want to add any grouping levels? Hell no, the question didn't say so. So I'm going to go next and then they will ask whether you want to sort the data into ascending order of club name and ascending order of position. Now I'm going to skip this question first, okay, because I'm experimenting with something, okay. So I'm going to skip this question and I want to see whether um, the order of my field names are correct in the report, okay, because I kind of noticed that if you, if you use... Um, the uh, sorting here, what's going to happen is it's actually going to mess up the order in which the field names appear. Okay, so I'm going to skip this particular question first and I'm going to show you guys another way in order for us to be able to sort the data in the report. So I'm going to click next. Okay, and because it wants a tabular report, I select tabular and the page has to be displayed in landscape, obviously, because we have so much data here to display, right? So I'm going to go to landscape. I'm going to go next and then it's going to ask what uh, what title do you want for your report now if you look here the question says they need the reports title to be mtb marathon results as a title at the top of the page so i'm just going to conveniently copy this and type it inside here and then i'm going to finish and preview the report okay so let's see whether everything is arranged uh, correctly or not oh it is nice last name first name gender age race number last name first name gender age race number oh nice kilometers per hour distance underscore uh, club name position and total oh nice fantastic okay now let's do the uh, data sorting here okay sorts the data into ascending order of club name and ascending order of position okay so how I do the sorting, obviously I can't click anywhere here 
what I need to do is I need to go somewhere called the design view. Okay, so I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go to design view. Okay, now you'll notice a function called group and sort. So I'm going to click that. Okay, this funny thing is going to appear. I'm not grouping data, I'm sorting the data, right? So now I need to sort the data into ascending order of club name. So I'm going to add a sort and I'm going to sort ascending order of club name with A on top, right? Okay, that's ascending. Descending with will be with Z on top. And then ascending order of position. So under club name, I'm going to add a sort and I'm going to select position. But this one needs to be in Oh, this one needs to be in ascending order as well. So I'm going to change this to from smallest to largest as well. Okay, so all good. So I'm going to sort club name in ascending order, then by position in ascending order. So I've done the sorting, right? So let's have a look at how the report looks like now. Okay, now there are actually a few views here. Okay, now for me, I never use the report view because um, to be honest, I, I find it kind of useless, okay? Now, print preview, obviously, if you use it, it actually shows you how your report looks like when you print your report out, okay? So that's useful if you want to preview your report, and that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to select print preview, okay? And my report is actually across two pages, all right? So everything looks kind of okay. So let's see whether uh, the data is sorted in ascending order of club name. So let's see, where's the club name? So F, K, M, T, right? That's good. So everything is sorted in the correct order. But now what we need to do, right, is you will notice like, um, you know, some of the field names are actually hidden, right? They are actually um, hidden behind other field names like position is like, I don't know, this... This reads like session or something like that. So in order for us to change how the data is displayed, okay, we can go to another view called the layout view. Okay, so I'm going to close the print preview first and I'm going to go view here and I'm going to go to the layout view. So layout view actually allows you to see how your report looks like in real time. Okay, now so obviously um, I need to make extra space for the race number here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the gender. So I'm going to select the field name and I'm going to hold down control and select the data. And then I'm going to just resize it like that so that I can have some space for the other fields here. Poor race number. Ah, there you go. Okay, kilometers per hour. I'm going to move it over here. Race number. Okay, what's this? Gonna make resize this and then this would be position okay so everything looks good now all the data and the field names can be seen uh, no not really <laughs> distance in kilometers there you go so I'm gonna save it and in order for me to be able to see how it would look like printed out okay I'm gonna go to print preview so everything looks great now Okay, so next question, has a page orientation of port, uh, landscape, done that, fits on a single page wide, yes, the data is actually on two pages, but it doesn't, the columns do not overflow to the next page, you don't have total time in the next page, so fits on a single page wide is actually correct, okay, now includes only the text, MTB marathon results as a title at the top of the page, so that's done. Formatted so that it displays in a black 30-point serif font style with all letters fully visible, right? Obviously, I don't think this is uh, 30 points, so let's change that, okay? So I'm going to go to design view. Now remember, I don't use report view. Layout view is for you to just um, uh, resize the fields the, uh, and the field names. Um, print preview is for you to see how the report looks like when you print it. Design view is for more advanced editing options. Case in point, previously we used the group and sort function here. And then right now we want to modify um, the header here so that it is um, a 30 point serif font. So I go to home and I'm going to choose my favorite serif font, which is Times New Roman. And it needs to be 30. Okay, 
but it also needs to be black. Unfortunately, this is gray, so I'm going to change it to black. Whoa, whoops, my bad. So it should be this. <laughs> okay, so you need to make sure that all the data can be seen. There you go. Okay, has only your name, center number, and candidate number in the footer of the report so that it appears on every page. So I want my name, uh, center number, and candidate number to appear at the bottom of the report on every single page. So where should I put my name, uh, center number, and candidate number? I need to put it under page footer. Why page footer? Obviously, because I want it to appear at the bottom of every single page, okay, P-A-G, right? So I go to design and I'm gonna use a label. I'm not gonna use a text box because a text box requires you to link it to existing data. A label, on the other hand, is just a field name or a name, okay, that doesn't change. So always remember that when it asks you to put in a label, uh, put it, asks you to put in uh, your name, center number, and candidate number, or things that do not change, you use a, A, all right? So I'm gonna put it here, I'm gonna type my name. Okay, and just so, okay, I'm just going to center align it so that it looks good. Okay, and then let's print preview the report first before we print it out. Oh my God, so beautiful. So my name, center number, and candidate number is at the bottom of the first page. And it is also at the bottom of the second page. So that is what the question requires you to do. Right, I'm going to print it now as a PDF, obviously. And I'm going to save it as printout2. So how would your report look like? It will look like this when it comes out from the printer. Okay, beautiful. Okay, now we're going to move on to the final portion of uh, the uh, data manipulation section of this paper oh this is such a long paper all right so question 24 right okay using fields from the score and club tables produce a tabular report that selects a record where position is one country does not include kent shows only the six fields da, 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 da. okay so it says using fields from the score and club tables okay so i'm going to close everything here now Remember that the data from the tables are actually combined to create a query and the query actually does um, runtime calculation and it performs filtering by putting in uh, the correct criteria and then from all the data that you filtered out, some of them will remain that you will then use to display in your report. So it's always a top-down process. Now, in this particular question, you need to create a new report. So what do you do? You need to create a new query for the report first. Okay. Now, right now, the question says using fields from the score and club tables. So I'm going to trust the question, okay, because I've done some uh, older papers. And when they say using fields from only the two tables, right, okay, there's sometimes... Uh, is a, there is a possibility that you need to extract data from a third table. So I'm going to believe what the question says here and only select data from these two tables because it says so. Okay. However, if the question does not specify anything, you need to select data from all the tables. Okay. So remember that. So I'm just going to select data from the club and the score table. So I'm going to select club, create, query wizard. So club table and the score table. Please, please, I pray that this is actually correct because I trust the question, okay? <laughs> so this is question 24. So I'm gonna type Q24. Okay, now, then I'm going to go to design view because, okay, as you can see here, we now have, uh, let's see how many records, 773 as well. Okay, so we have 773 records, okay, but there are some records that we do not need and the records, are, and the records that we need uh, should match the selection criteria here. Okay, so position is one. So I'm going to go to design view. Under position, I'm going to select one. Okay, so the criteria for my position has to be one in order for the query to select the record. 
Okay, so I'm going to run it. So you see one 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 one, and then you will see that from seven hundred and seventy three records, it is now only forty two records. Wow. So these are like super good runners, I suppose. Okay. Anyway, uh, next is country does not include cat. Okay. Now, previously, remember when it says include something, we put asterisk, uh, the data asterisk, right? So now, I'm just going to put star can star, but because it says does not include, I'm going to put a not in front. So not star can star or not asterisk can asterisk. This means that does not contain the word cat. So I'm going to press enter. So from not can't, it becomes not like can't. Okay, so I'm going to run it. And you will notice that uh, for the country, you don't see any can't uh, anymore. Okay, so from uh, 72 records, I think it is now 35 records. Okay, so all good. We've done what we are supposed to do uh, for the query. Now we can take uh, the new newly uh, filtered records here, 35 records in total, and arrange them are uh, in a new report so i'm going to select question 24 here create and i'm going to select report wizard now what needs to be displayed position first name last name club name country and distance in kilometers so um position first name last name club name country and distance underscore km. Okay, make sure everything is in one box. Don't do this, do this, because we don't need to view the data um, based on certain, uh, uh, view the records based on certain data, and we don't need to group them either. So I'm gonna go next. I don't need to group anything. The question didn't say that I need to. That. Okay, um, sorts the data into descending order of country. So I'm going to skip this again because I don't want it to screw up the um, uh, the sequence of uh, the uh, fields uh, that appear. I'm going to do this in the design view instead. So sort has a page orientation of portrait. Okay, so page orientation of portrait and then includes only the text winning club members as a title displayed in a larger font. Uh, size fully visible at the top of the page. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to type it here. Okay, so let's have a look at the report. Winning club members is not a valid report name. What? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to call it question 24 and then I'm going to modify the report title later. Okay, so I'm going to click finish. So the report looks like this, okay. Position, first name, last name, club name, country and distance, okay. Position, first name, last name, club name, country and distance, I think, right. So um, let's fix the, um, what do you call that, the report uh, title first. So I'm gonna go to design view and then I'm going to just put in the winning club member. There you go, all right. Now we then need to fix um, the um, data that is displayed because if you go to print preview, you notice that some information cannot be seen. For example, position is now position. Um, distance in kilometers is just M with uh, some hashtags here. Okay, so where do we need to go in order for us to change the layout on how the report is being displayed? Obviously, layout view. Okay. Now the first name has a little bit too much space, so let's reduce that and do that. So last name also has a little bit too much space, so I'm going to move this over to make some space for distance in kilometers. Ha, huh, okay. So now it looks good. We then need to work on the sorting of the data into descending order of country. So I go to design view. Okay, under design, group and sort, make sure it's activated. Okay, I'm going to add a sort and then I need to sort it by country, 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 in descending order. So this time I need to select with Z on top. 
so z to a instead of a to z so let's preview that so country w s m e d c b okay looks good all right now has a label oh sorry calculates so we're done with all these okay so the next question would be calculates the average distance and positions this under the distance underscore km column formatted as an integer all right so we need to find out the average distance so basically what we need to do is we need to take all the distance here add them together and divide it by the number of records okay obviously we're not going to do that manually because there's actually an automated way for us to do this so any advanced things that we need to do for example grouping and sorting um, uh, um, putting in um, our, um, our name center number and candidate number and all that we can actually do it in design view so I'm going to go to design view I'm going to select distance underscore kilometers I'm going to select total and then I'm going to select average okay so it will automatically calculate the average distance in kilometers and place it in the report footer so the report footer actually appears at the um, last page of the report at the bottom okay so I'm going to go to print preview and have a look at the data so 51.42 blah 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 but if you look at the question here it says it has to be displayed as an integer okay this is obviously not an integer so I'm going to go to design view and then I'm going to make some changes to this now if you look at the equals here it basically um, reminds you of Microsoft Excel okay so when you use um, any spreadsheet application uh, a formula actually starts with an equals okay a function starts with an equals as well so if I want to change this to an integer, I'm going to put int. So int is actually a function that converts whatever you put inside the brackets okay, into an integer. So once I've done that, let's preview the data again. And it becomes 51. Isn't that freaking beautiful? Okay, now has a label average race distance to the left of this value. Now the reason why they need a label here is because if you put 51 here, uh, people who are reading the report might not understand what 51 actually means, right? So I'm going to go to design view here and I need to put in a label. Remember what the label is? AA. Okay, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to type average race distance. Okay, so in order for it to look good, I'm going to left, uh, sorry, right align this. So I'm going to go to home, I'm going to right align it. So let's print preview and that's how it looks like. Okay, now if I want to be um, um, even more picky, okay, what I can do is I can reduce the size of this. I'm going to push this over here. Okay, no, that's not a very wise idea because we need to show the entire formula. So I'm going to leave it as it is, like so. Okay, so maybe I'll left align this so that it looks good. I don't know, look better. <laughs> okay, it's worse. Ew. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll just shift it back to the right. Okay. All right, so that's done. And then has your name, center number, and candidate number on the report. Now, it didn't say where you need to put it. So you can either put it in the page header or the page footer as long as it appears um, on every single page. Okay, so under design again, I'm going to use AA and I'm just going to put it in the footer. Okay, it's going to make it look good by center aligning it. Yeah, let's preview it. Okay, everything looks good. Beautiful. So let's print this out and save it as printout3. Okay, so print printout3. I'm going to click save. Okay, evidence number seven. Place in your evidence document a screenshot of the formula used in the database to calculate the average distance. So how did you calculate the average race distance here? Okay, so you basically use this formula, right? So make sure that the entire formula can be seen. So that's the reason why I didn't cover or resize the formula previously. 
Okay, because if you do that, you can't see the entire formula. So what you need to show is basically this particular portion here. And I'm going to put it in uh, evidence 7. Okay, I'm going to resize it a little bit so that... Ooh. Okay, last but not least, question 25. Export the report created in step 24 in a portable document format PDF. Save the exported file with an appropriate file name in your work area. Place in your evidence document a screenshot to show the exported file saved in your work area. Make sure there is evidence of the file type. Okay, so there's actually two ways for you guys to do it. Okay, number one, you can um, export it as a PDF. Okay, or hey, what am I doing? Question 24, my bad. Okay, so you can export it as a PDF or like what I did, you can actually just print it uh, as a PDF. So both ways work. So I'm going to just export it as a PDF. Okay, so I'm going to call this a meaningful name. Um, so I'm just going to call it Winning Club Members. Okay, I'm going to save that. And it basically produces the same thing as when I send it to the printer. So it's the same. Okay, so right now we need to show an evidence that we've done that already. So I'm going to select Winning Club Member and make sure that it actually shows uh, the document type but now it says Chrome HTML document right but it wants it in PDF so what's going to happen is I'm going to go to properties to show that the file type is actually PDF okay so I'm going to take a screenshot of this to prove that I have actually exported the file correctly there you go okay so we are done with uh, question 25 and this concludes uh, the data manipulation portion of this paper okay so in the next video we'll be working on the uh, mail merge portion of this paper which is the third video